Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome to my shop and welcome to another episode of my shop move setup series thingy. This time we're doing dust collection. So we have a clear view cyclone and a whole thing of Nordfab ductwork to install, which we'll be covering in this video. Clearview did provide the ductwork as well as the collector, which I am excited about because this is what I want to put in my old shop. But uh, now I'm blessed with ceiling height. <laughs> In the, uh, the last shop, I had to settle for a compact cyclone because I had seven feet, and that was it. Now I have eight and a half, so I can assemble this and get it in here with uh, a little bit of room to spare, as you'll see. So we're going to cover the assembly of the dust collector, then we'll do the install of all the ductwork, and we'll do a little uh, testing to see where things are at, and I'll give you some thoughts and all that at the end. So let's uh, jump into putting together one of these dust collectors so you have an idea of what goes into that if you choose to go down this road as well. Clearview essentially has two versions you can go with. You can either go with a clear cyclone or a metal cyclone. If you're a little more mature than me and you don't want to see your dust swirling around as you're working, uh, you can go with a metal cyclone. But for me, uh, the clear cyclone just kind of adds a little bit of fun and excitement to any dust making project in the shop. <laughs> Another sort of nice thing with this too is that there are a lot of sort of features and options that you can add or subtract from the package. So if you want to do your own setup to do something a little more custom, you can do that too. I have the essentially the full package of all the different options. But for instance, if you wanted to make your own wall hanging brackets, you can not order brackets at all. Or if you want to do a stand, you can make a stand or you can order a stand. Or if you want to direct vent, you can order this without filters as well. And while we're on the topic of that, I'm not gonna be doing a direct vent because my shop is conditioned most of the year and I don't really wanna dump all of my conditioned air outside the shop. Also because my shop is attached to my house, I don't wanna create a negative pressure inside the shop and therefore inside the house, which could cause uh, all kinds of unforeseen things with the house. <laughs> so for me, the best option is to use a filter stack and keep that air inside the shop. So let's get started with the assembly. The first thing on the list is to assemble the mounting studs. These will suspend the cyclone assembly from the hanger plate and allow the entire unit to be adjusted up and down relative to the mount and also leveled independently from that mount. The impeller is shipped inside the impeller housing and needs to be extracted from its prison so it can be mounted to the motor. These tabs hold the motor mount to the housing and need to be removed. These will be used later to hang the cyclone to the motor once it's all up on the wall. Inside the little box is the taper lock bushing, which will connect the impeller to the motor. The studs get threaded into the motor mount and the hanger plate can be dropped on. The motor mount hanging from these studs is what allows for that adjustability. The assembly is slid over the motor and the motor is bolted to the motor housing plate. The assembly is slid over the motor and the motor is bolted to the motor mounting plate. And next we can get the impeller attached. It's still bolted inside the housing for transport. Here's that taper lock bushing, and I'll loosely install it onto the middle of the impeller and drop the assembly onto the motor. The keyways are aligned and the key stock is then dropped in. The impeller needs to be held up a bit off the motor mounting plate. I use some parallels for my bridge port because at this point in the shop move, there's no scraps of wood laying around. The three bolts on the bushing get evenly tightened down and in doing so, the taper on the bushing causes it to compress over the motor shaft. You can see the split in the bushing getting smaller as the bolts get tighter. Lastly here is the set screw which holds the key stock in place. Now I'll take care of the electrical prep on the motor by installing the pigtail. I picked up a cord clamp to make the install a little cleaner and the connections inside the motor could be made with wire nuts, but I opted to use ring terminals because I'm fancy like that. I'll secure the ground wire to the grounding screw and then make the hot connections by bolting the terminals together.
I put a little anti-ox on the terminals and then I'll wrap the connections with electrical tape. I'll throw the cover back on and now it's time to start getting this onto the wall by getting the bracket hung. I want to get the collector mounted as high as possible so I'll measure the offset between the top of the motor and the mounting bar. I'll install a leg on one end into a stud, I'll level the bar and then drive a leg on the other side. I'll do a few pull ups to make sure it's not going to come off the wall but you know not that my body weight is really a good test but you know <laughs> it's something. So now we just grab this thing and climb the ladder and throw it up there. I'm just kidding. Next up is the filter transition, which is pretty easy to assemble. The sides are slid into their slots and the end cap is attached. That assembly is slid onto the end of the impeller housing and the bolts on the housing are tightened up to clamp the filter transition in place. Holes are drilled through and bolts finalize the connection. The last thing here is to run a bead of silicone over all the seams to make everything airtight. So now the impeller housing can be connected to the cyclone. This is where you can adjust the inlet and outlet orientation as the impeller housing can be rotated 360 degrees around the cyclone. Once it's in position, the two are secured together with some screws. I had a different duct routing in mind at this point, so I did end up changing the orientation from what you see me doing here. I then rest the cyclone on the bin and reattach those tabs. You also have the ability to rotate the entire cyclone and impeller assembly while those tabs are loose. And now I can use those studs from the beginning to adjust the cyclone. I pulled the cyclone up as high as it would go to make enough room for the bin connection. These studs are also used to plumb the cyclone so it's not sitting there all crooked. I'll install the inlet extension thing with a couple of screws and then to get them out of the way I'll assemble the filter stack. These get a bit of silicone and a band clamp. And to get rid of some more parts I'll install the ducting adapter. Now I can take care of the electrical hookup. I mounted the control box up on the wall next to the electrical service that I had installed. This box has a relay in it which will turn the motor on when it receives 110 volt power. The little white box thing is a remote switch. I connected the relay box to the existing junction box with an offset connector and fed some short wires through. These connect to the two input terminals on the relay and I'll bring a ground connection over and that takes care of everything inside the relay box. I put the cover on and label those circuits. Back over at the junction box I'll connect the two hots with wire nuts or morettes if you're Canadian and bond the ground. The motor can then be plugged in and that takes care of this portion. Next I'll attach the flex holes between the cone and the drum and then I can move on to installing the filters. My installation leaves about 5 inches of space between the filter stack and then the filter transition. Either the gap can be bridged with some tube or the filters can be raised. I went with the easier option. The bottom of the cleanout has 3 leveling feet. I swapped those with longer carriage bolts and made some fancy walnut feet to make up the last little bit. I'll add a bit of silicone to the cleanout and the filter stack can be dropped in place. I slid it back in place and evenly raised the stack with the adjusters before securing the stack on top with a couple of screws. So that takes care of the assembly of the collector. Next, let's take a look at putting in all the ductwork, and for all of that, I went through Clearview's design service, which was uh, super nice. So they give you a little questionnaire, and you just tell them what machines you have, where the dust ports are, what size they are, how often you use those machines, and then you give them as poor of a drawing of your shop as you can. <laughs> I gave them a pretty bad one. And they design your uh, entire setup for you, 
And with that design process, if you decide you want to order ductwork through them, they literally send you a single order of every single piece you need for your custom dust ductwork setup. Every single hose clamp, every single elbow, every single thing, it just comes in one big box and you're ready to go. You have a diagram of how it all goes together and then you just start putting it together. It's a really great time saver and you don't have to give a whole lot of thought to do I have everything I need or not having something because you forgot one little part here or there. Literally everything you need is right there. You can get to work installing your system the day that box shows up. So once again, this metal ducting is from Nordfab. It's a modular metal piping and is much more fun to work with than the old piping I had in my old shop. My old system used HVAC style fittings, so every connection needed to be screwed together and every seam needed to be sealed. So here is the, uh, the most annoying part of the entire install, and that is getting anchor points ready in the ceiling. In some areas, my desired placement falls between two ceiling joists, so I attach some pieces of wood to the ceiling between the two joists that I could attach a hook to. The ductwork hangs from these adjustable cable loops called gripples. I can get these kind of set where I wanted them and then drop in a section of pipe. Once it's hanging there, the height can be adjusted without much hassle. These made doing the install by myself super easy. And here's how everything fits together. The rolled ends butt together and the clamp locks them in place. The inside of the clamp has a gasket so it also creates a seal. You just gotta watch your fingers when closing those clamps because uh, they can bite. <laughs> Over at the collector on the inlet there is a ductwork adapter and an angle adjustment elbow thing. I'll get those in place so I can get the trunk to the correct placement. I'll come back and make the final connection later. So here is the main 8 inch trunk and this is where I started to deviate a bit from the plan. One of those pipes was supposed to be cut down so the trunk turned on the closer side of the soffit in the ceiling and I decided to leave it long and have the trunk run along the other side of the soffit. I thought it would be nicer to have complete headspace over the table saw area. Now once I turn the corner, I can install the first Y. This Y also serves as a reducer, taking the pipe size down to 5 inch for the rest of the runs and 4 inch for the table saw drop. Next up is the Y that will split the run for the planer and bandsaw. Now I'll just throw on these 45s to get them out of the way. One nice thing about this system is you can rotate the parts in place and you can do that even after the system is fully assembled, just in case you need to change the angle of something. Another pipe to continue the run to the jointer and to get some parts out of the way, I'll assemble the drop for the table saw. This has an adapter for a flex hose on one side of the blast gate. And again, watch those fingers. I can snap that into place and now I need to make my first cut and use one of the sleeves. These sleeves are telescopic, so again, there's some adjustability built in if things need to change. The sleeve gets sealed to the cut pipe with an O-ring and a clamp. Now for the drop to the jointer. I'll use the other half of that cut pipe and another sleeve to get the height of the blast gate a comfortable distance off the floor.
Having the gate straight out from the wall wasn't really the most comfortable way to operate it when standing at the jointer, so I can loosen the clamp and turn it a bit. Now it's more in line with how you would reach for it. So now for the transverse section of the ductwork. I mocked up my fittings to get a length for the pipe and I can cut and sleeve it. One more gripple to hold this section of ductwork and I can lift this whole section into place. Since that sleeve is telescopic, I can dial in the length of the ductwork in place and set the clamp when it looks right. On the end, I'll add the elbow and the Y to the planer and bandsaw and start building up the drops. The bandsaw gets connected with 4 inch flex hose and I'm using Izzy's quick fittings here so I can swap the collection from the bandsaw to the drum sander whenever I need to use it. The jointer gets hooked up with a section of 5 inch flex hose as does the planer. Lastly, it's back to the start to make the final adjustments and get the cyclone connected to the ductwork. I just need to make an adjustment to the fittings and then I can clamp them together. The adapter can now be screwed to the cyclone and sealed with silicone. So here is the final layout for that ductworks with the main trunk that runs along the back side of the shop turns along this, uh, this beam here in the shop, falls down through to the jointer and drops, and then we have another run that goes across the middle here and drops down to the bandsaw and to the planer. Now in the design process, you know, my original thought for this was to have the main trunk come through here and then split and then kind of come over here and drop down to the table saw. And this would be more of the main split area. So a drop here and here and the jointer will continue down over here. But through the design process, uh, they were like, well, you know, <laughs> you have enough power in this collector to do a less efficient uh, ductwork layout as far as airflow goes, because this is obviously a much longer run than just coming straight through here. So why don't we have a more efficient layout for the shop space rather than worrying about the efficiency of the airflow? So that's why we end up going this way. This leaves my assembly area, the headspace completely open and I'm really happy with this uh, overall layout. We also looked at a design where we had a branch come off the trunk here and pick up the jointer and planer, not the jointer and planer, the bandsaw and planer. But again, just leaving this area, this headspace open and essentially encapsulating my wood shop space in the ductwork worked out really nicely and has led to a really, uh, at least for me, a really clean and efficient uh, overall layout and design. So next I want to get an objective reading of the uh, airflow coming out of the machines. Uh, subjectively, it seems like I'm getting a better extraction or a better collection with this system than I was with my old one. So I want to get just some objective data on that and what the actual CFMs being uh, pulled out of the machines actually are. So uh, we get the anemometer and get some readings on this. If you missed my video three, I think it was like three years ago, where I upgraded my last collector. Uh, we covered like how to do the actual calculations and some of that stuff in that video. So go check that out if you uh, would like to. <laughs> in that video, I was upgrading from a single stage collector to a, well, a compact cyclone collector. That was the Laguna three horsepower C-Flux. And this is going to be in apples to oranges comparison because this is a totally different uh, ducting setup. So I'm not really comparing the collectors per se. I'm just collect, I'm comparing the actual uh, results of the full systems to each other, which should give some kind of interesting uh, information. Obviously the clear view is a bigger motor turning a bigger impeller. So it's capable of moving more air. So 
obviously it's going to be able to pull more air than my last collector, but it's going to be interesting to see what it's like once the actual collector is hooked to a system. That's really where it comes down to, because what the collector can do by itself is irrelevant, because you're never just going to be like dumping dust directly into the inlet. It's always connected to something. So I've got my anemometer, and we're going to see where things kind of end up. What's kind of interesting already is that the runs to the tools are already much longer than they were in my old shop. So we'll see how that kind of that kind of compares. So we're going to do the table saw first. So this is a four inch dust port, 20 something feet of pipe with 10 feet of flex hose. Let's see what we're getting right at the port. Uh, that was really hard because <laughs> there's a lot of air coming through there. A lot more than I was expecting, but around 5,600 feet per minute is what I was getting. So like last time, this is just the calculation of the volume of a cylinder. So on the end, we need the area that's going to be the size of your pipe, the cross-sectional area of that pipe in square feet. So for a four inch pipe, that is the square feet and you multiply that by the total length, which is the wind speed. That was 5,600. 5,600. Yeah, 487.2 cubic feet per minute. CFM. <laughs> and for just sort of a fun comparison of things, I'm going to do the planer since it's easy to get at the... Uh, the dust port, and uh, this is a five inch drop instead of a four inch drop. So we'll see what this is like. Oh <laughs> I don't know if that made it. There's my paper. Did it? <laughs> ah. I may have concluded the test early. No, it's not there yet. Um, oh, did they get stuck on something? Let me see. Maybe I can pull it the rest of the way into the cyclone. Here's my piece of paper. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, I don't know where it is. I'm not sure how far it got. Let's see, hopefully it's just right there. We can just suck it into the cyclone. Uh, <laughs> I'm pretty sure it didn't, I didn't see it in the drum. I hope it's not stuck somewhere in the ducting and now I gotta go find it. Like it's stuck in an elbow or something. So it's not stuck here. <laughs> oh, where's this thing? Let me check the drop for the table saw next. Nope, not there. Did it vanish to some other dimension? This is not where I expected this video to go. Oh. Nope, not in a bin. What the heck? Maybe I'll just turn it back on and shake the pipes. Maybe it's just caught up somewhere. You didn't know this was a dust teleportation device, did you? <laughs> be surprised 
if it still works after that. Still good, okay. Let's try that test again. <laughs> That's what I get for setting up the shot and making sure the camera can actually see the numbers and not thinking about what happens when you turn it on. Looks like around 3,900-ish. It's kind of fluctuating between 4,000 and 3,800. I'm actually getting more here at the planer. I'm getting 530 CFM. Now one quick final test that I want to do is just to see what having multi -mach multiple machines, both well, blast gates open, kind of does to the um, airspeed. Because sometimes I don't always remember to close them or whatever. I'm kind of curious to see if it even matters that I have the table saw open while the planer is uh, open as well. So let's see what we get this time. So pretty much the same thing. It doesn't matter if I have another blast gate open, I'm getting the same volume of air coming through this port. That's kind of nice to know. All right, let's see how that compares to the old system. So here are the results from last time. So it looks like the planer I'm getting roughly the same airflow as before. Interesting note there is the planer was the closest thing to the dust collector in the old shop and the run was uh, under 10 feet, which is kind of cool. I have like 30 something feet of run right now. I'm getting around the same amount of airflow from this new system. And then the other one we have here is a table saw. That one was 427 and now we're at close to 500. So we have a little bit of an improvement at the table saw, which is, uh, which is super nice. Now, one thing to keep in mind with the readings from the, uh, the old Cyclone, those readings were taken when the Cyclone was basically new. It hadn't seen a whole lot of uh, dust cycle through it, which kind of brings me into the, uh, the things that I like better about this than my uh, old dust collector, and that is the fine particulate separation. So on my old collector, it had the agitators on the filters because you had to clean those filters because a whole lot of the fine dust bypassed the cyclone and went right into the filters. So over the, the uh, what I have been like three years, four years, however long I had it, uh, I, I came to find that the ratio of bin changes to filter bag changes was about five to eight uh, to one. So for every five to eight times I emptied the um, dust bin, I'd have to empty the bag on the filter once because there was that much stuff getting in there. On um, this one so far, I'm at about 15 drums of sawdust and I haven't uh, touched the filters at all and I've been waiting to do this video to kind of do that. That's one of the things that I'm really liking about finally being at this stage of the dust collection game is not being, uh, or not having to worry about cleaning filters constantly and the filters being the crux of the whole system because these things plug up and once they're plugged up, your performance goes to crap. So I'm really liking not having to do this all the time. The old Cyclone was a lot better than the single stage unit, which like every couple of times you change the bag, you take the filter out into the backyard, beat the bejesus out of it, hit it with a leaf blower, and then you're finally back to full performance again. Well, it's a little bit down there. All right, let's go take a look. We look down here in the cleanout box, where it is very dark. We got a decent layer of fine dust down there. Let me pull this cap off real quick. So if we reach in here, we're not. That's not a lot. <laughs> that's you know compared to bags and bags of fine sawdust. This is basically nothing. So as I had mentioned several years ago in the old shop, if you're looking at a compact cyclone, uh, a big one like I, like I had, at that point, price point wise, 
you might as well go to a full height cyclone and get the better separation and the better performance. Unless you absolutely need to fit that cyclone into you know, a really limited ceiling height like I had, it's way better just to go to a tall cyclone to get better separation and you'll be happier in the long run. You're not gonna be worrying about, am I gonna upgrade this later on down the road? So take a look at the different install heights. All the manufacturers have those things listed on their website. Uh, for Clearview with this system, they say eight and a half feet, which is what I have here. But you can look at their website and they have diagrams and you can see how big every single component is and you can kind of put that into the height that you're trying to work with. Now as far as the collector goes, I've been really happy with this setup. It has been working out really nicely. And yes, I actually really enjoy watching the dust kind of swirl around. So this is in like a good spot. So if I'm standing at the planer, just feeding boards into the planer, I'm like, I'm looking up, I got something to look at. It's a little more exciting than just seeing wood just going through. It's also really easy to be able to tell when the cyclone is getting full or the bin's getting full because the uh, cyclonic action of the sawdust in here uh, changes and it gets kind of weird looking. So you know when you're getting kind of close to full and then you know when it's actually full because you start seeing <laughs> chips and stuff coming up the cone. So yeah, you, you want to watch out for that. <laughs> As far as changing the bin, I find that to be relatively easy. You can just kind of flop this thing off in here, let it sit there, and you can just pull your drum out. And I just take this over to the, uh, the door, I throw it in my skid steer, take it out in the forest and dump it. So I don't find that to be too big of a deal. I had thought I was going to want to put wheels on this or something, but I haven't found that to be uh, too big of a problem either. Uh, if it's really heavy for you, you can also just put a, uh, a hand truck or a dolly under there and you can just wheel it out on uh, one of those. Another nice thing about these drums is this is just a very simple, generic rolled lip drum. So if you wanted to have more than one drum here so you can quickly swap them out as you're working if they get full, you can do that. You can either order drums from, from Clearview or you can get them from any industrial supplier or you can get recycled ones. You know, it all fits with this clamp system. So once you have the lid and the clamp, you can swap the drums easily. Add as many as you want. You can have a thousand drums <laughs> if you want. So lastly, a few things on the piping. So just to give you an idea on ballpark pricing for everything in here that came in that big uh, crate box, that was about $4,000, so the ductwork is a little more than what the collector is. So the full system in here is around $7,000, which includes the collector and all of its, uh, its things. I will say this about the, the ductwork. It is like the user experience is like way the heck up in the air somewhere. It's, it's amazing. It's super easy to work with. It's super easy to change things. If you're following the home renovation series, we had to cut this hole in the ceiling here and we were just able to unclamp these sections of pipe, drop them out of the way, cut our hole and put the pipe back in without any sort of hassle, which is, uh, which is super nice. So now that I've experienced this, I'm, I'm honestly spoiled now and I will have like no desire to use anything other than this clamp together system uh, ever again. So if you're in a position where this kind of fits in your budget, uh, I would recommend looking at it for serious because you won't be disappointed, um, but it's, it's, it's super nice. Uh, as far as install time, let me touch on that real quick. So to assemble the collector and get it completely on the wall, got all the wiring done, it took me about five hours. The duct work was four, and it was easy and painless and enjoyable. I mean, I don't know if necessarily enjoyable. Like, I don't really enjoy installing stuff, but it wasn't bad. I didn't hate doing it. <laughs> it was very, a very smooth process, both the duct work and the collector. The dust collector had really good instructions. I didn't get led down the wrong path somewhere, misunderstand something, or have to redo something. It's a very calm and easy uh, four or five hours to get it put together, get it up on the wall, and the same thing with the, uh, the dust collection piping. Here's the diagram, here's all the pieces, they're all labeled, put them all together, they all clamp together and you hang them from the ceiling as you go. Doesn't get much easier than that. So that is the new dust collection system that's been installed in the shop and operational for uh, eight and a half months and it's been uh, absolutely wonderful. If you want to uh, 
take a look at Clearview Cyclones. I will leave a link to their website down in the description. If you use my coupon code CORONA5, you can save 5% off your Cyclone order. I'm really excited to finally be working with Clearview. They're a really great small family-run business, and the Bushies have been uh, following the channel since I started in 2014. So it's been, it's, it's good to finally have a place for one of their products to actually fit. <laughs> so that is going to do it for this one. Thank you as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments on the dust collection system or anything here in the shop, please feel free to leave me a comment. As always, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, <laughs> happy working and dust making and stuff. Collecting, collect that dust. <laughs>